Good morning, Homegrown. This is Christy, and today's video is going to be short and sweet. I just want to talk about something that I bet you've not been thinking about when doing your prepping. Stick with us. All right, so this is about the fifth take on this video for me because I get off onto a tangent and I start rambling about a few things. So I'm going to try not to do that on this one. I want to keep it real short and sweet for you. One thing that I don't think a lot of people are thinking about when they're prepping is in the future when they need to use these things that they are prepping. Okay, think about that. Right now you're in the now. You've planted your garden you've harvested it, you've preserved it, and now you're standing back and you're looking at your shelving and you're thinking, wow, isn't this beautiful? And it's great. And you're even eating out of it. But here's something that I want you to really think deeply about. And this is going to touch into um, maybe some um, raw spots for a few people, but it's something that needs to be thought about right now. Let's say, well, for, for one, let's back up for just a second. And I think I might or might not have shown this in another video. If you are canning with mason jars, obviously you can get the lid off. You take the ring off, pop the top off. But if you have um, the number 10 cans or even just a regular can that does not have the pull-off lid, do you have the tools to get those open? Because them cans are like, you need a bomb to blow the lids off of them things because them things are so tough. And you're going to need can openers. So are you thinking about that when you're preparing? Man, I've got all these cans. This is great. I got like 20 cans of green beans or 50 cans of corn. And I can get into my mason jars, but can you get into your number 10 cans? You know, and you don't want to be jabbing them with knives or however people get into those to try to get the lid off that would you don't want to create injury now um, you're going to need a can opener a manual can opener if you're in a situation where you're using this food obviously you're not going to probably have electricity so or maybe if you're living off grid you've got to have a manual can opener and those cans you've got to have a heavy duty manual can opener not one of them jobs that puts a battery in it and it goes around for you i'm talking which you don't want to mess with batteries anyway but if you've got the hand crank, you know, they make heavy duty commercial versions of those. Can you get into your cans? Here's another thing that I'm wondering if you're thinking about. And this has been on my mind for a while. If we were to have a situation to where you could not get online and look something up, would you remember this time next year how you canned those pickled eggs? Would you remember the exact ingredients and the amounts? If you needed to butcher your beef, are you going to remember exactly how to do that? Now, right now, I've probably got half of you saying, yeah, yeah, I've done it enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to be stressed. You're going to be in a stressful situation. Not to mention, you have no way of looking it up. And I know everybody's saying, yeah, I'll just, I'll just do this. I've got it. I'm not, I'm not worried. But it's like electricity. When electricity goes out, how many times do you walk in the bathroom and try to flip on the light so you can use the bathroom? Or go to the kitchen, flip on the light. There's no light to flip on. The electric's out. And you feel like an idiot. It's habit. You're used to going in there and turning that light on. And right now, everybody's in a habit of as soon as you want to know something, peck, 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 peck into YouTube. Peck, peck, peck into Google. And you find out everything you need to know. But if there is a grid down situation and no electricity, you are not going to be able to look that up. And depending on how long that's going on, you're either going to have to rely solely on memory or unless you have got your own binders put together. This is this other thing I wanted to talk to you about. So I don't have very good memory as it is. So I almost have to, this is almost a necessity for me. Okay, I'm going to talk about this one here first. This binder is 60 cents at Goodwill. I get my binders at Goodwill. I don't go brand new at Walmart. They're too stinking expensive. It's stupid. For no more than what it is, I can get the same thing at Goodwill. Now, if you can't find them at Goodwill, you can go to the Dollar Tree. 
Um, but this one was 60 cents a cute, you know, and I just took a black Sharpie and wrote on the side uh, my canning binder. Well, here's why I have a can canning binder, okay? In, say, a situation to where I can't look this up, and how many times you got a recipe and you're like, man, I gotta pull that up real quick because I gotta, I don't remember exactly how I, what I put in there. I have my blue book in here, my ball blue book, but I also have the recipes in here that I've either tweaked myself or I, they've handed down in the family or I pulled them offline. I really liked them. There is a lot of things that is not going to be in this book because the government is telling them that's not safe. Don't be telling them that they can can it. But people have been making pickled eggs, canning pickled eggs for generations. There's a lot of things. Butter, milk. You can can milk. So I have the recipes in here. That way I can look this up. So if there's ever a situation to where I cannot get online and look up the recipes and the ingredients and things, you know, I have them here. Right now I got someone saying, well, if you can't get on the internet and look it up, you can't can anyways. Yes, you can. You can do it over an open fire. We've done it many a times. The Amish, we, you know, we go over to the Amish. There's another video I'm hoping to post really, uh, real soon where, you know, they've made their own canner. It holds 80, uh, 86 jars, I think canning jars all one time and we were kind of chuckling about it I'm thinking oh my gosh I get seven jars in my canner and they're doing 80 87 at one time you know isn't that crazy but they do it over a fire they've built this stainless steel thing you know and welded it together and there's an open pit underneath you stick wood in there and it can be done okay it can be done but can you remember how to do it and do you have the things that's the thing so when you do this get the plastic covers only because things are going to spill and you can see there's uh, you can see there's little food remnants on here i can wash this with a rag if you, this is on the paper you're not going to be washing that off and your paper will be runt so you want to be able to keep these as long as possible right so these things here are super cheap you can give them packs of 100 50 25 100 200 and they're dirt cheap i prefer getting the ones that i don't know if you can hear that they're a little thicker. I have another binder somewhere, and I didn't realize this till I was putting it together. It's almost like plasticky, like plastic wrap thin. And it was crazy, so I ended up buying more, getting rid of those and putting these because these are thick. And when you start shopping, if some of you might already know what I'm talking about, don't get the really thin ones. I mean, they crinkle up and it's just, and they rip easy, so these are good ones. And they're still cheap. So you put all your recipes in here, okay? So I know can, if I have any recipes, pickled eggs, whatever you want, you can't remember, it's all right here. I don't have to get online and look it up. And I want you to think about this for everything, okay? Don't just do this for recipes in the kitchen. Man, if you've got a, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Say you've got someone who likes to work in a garage. And you get your manuals for that. You have a vehicle or you have something that you're taking care of. Start printing that stuff out. And putting it in these little, you know, label it what it is. And start putting it in these plastic things to keep it. Because you're not going to be able to look this up later if anything happens. And right now, you know, we have the ability to. But what if you don't? Then you can just pull this dude right off your shelf and take care of it. So I have one for mushrooms, okay? And I actually have this out because I'm getting ready to start this. I'm going to have a video for you guys soon. I sketched this on a piece of computer paper and my son colored it in. It's adorable. We spent time together, you know? He was coloring it. We were doing this as a little project together, so he was included in this, right? So inside, literally, it. I have everything I feel I need for raising my mushrooms. The trees, so here is the... Um, tree species and the type of mushrooms and what they accept and what they don't accept you know just imp important things like that and the only certain mushrooms grow in certain areas so there's growing indoors growing outdoors and there's much these are mushrooms that either i have already grown 
or I will be growing soon. I'm not going to print out and put things in here that I'm not going to try. That is so, that's such a waste of time. If you can't grow the mushrooms in Indiana where we are, then why would I want to print it out and put it in here, okay? So only do stuff that you know you're going to try or that you can use. So like um, shea take mushroom logs, right? And I've got pictures. I need to put these in the plastic things. I don't have them. Wine caps. These I've not tried yet. I'm going to try this year. I'm so excited about that. Um, and some of these I forage. Some of these I actually forage, and I just have notes, and I'll show you that here in a second. So, lion's mane. We haven't done a we haven't done a picture on that one yet. We've got to do that. Lion's mane. Here's information about that one. Oyster mushrooms. Okay. Reishi mushrooms. Morels. I forage for morels, but I actually bought spores this year, so um, I know where to get them and find them. But I also want to make sure I put in here, how can you take care of them after you get them? You know, preservation methods. You can dehydrate them. You can freeze them. Um, it's best just to fry them and eat them. They're fantastic. They don't last long in our house. But I have spores now, so I've printed this out. I haven't put this in here yet. On how I'm going to raise my own morels, right? So, turkey tail. Isn't that beautiful? It's pretty, and it's, you can't see it, but it's glistening. It's sparkly. But um, turkey tail, I harvested. There's a video. You can look that up. I actually, um, this is not really something that I know that you can get. There's things you can do to the wood, but I don't know that you can get the spore. Maybe you can get the spores. This, see, this is new to me, but I'm taking note. I'm putting it in here so for later use, I don't have to get online to look it up. Okay? Get what I'm saying? Puffball, chanterelles, shaga. But I want you to think about this. Okay? If you don't... Have a binder for the things that are going to mean the most to you when you're going to need it. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> if it's a H, an SHTF, I hate that acronym, a SHTF uh, situation. And for those of you who are not sure what that means or have never seen it, it's shit hit the fan, which means stuff is getting ugly and you better be preparing. The pre preppers are already prepared, right? That was a lot of peas. Mr. Popper's penguins, right? So, um, but I wonder if some of them think, are you going to have all of this in your memory when that happens? If you can't get online, you don't have any electricity, everything's off grid at this point. Are you going to remember how to, and right now i got someone saying, well, who's going to care about mushrooms at that point? Okay. Well, for one, mushrooms is medicine. I have another one on herbs. I have another one on gardening. I have one on canning. Um, I have one on medicines, the medicines that I make. And, but you don't need a binder on things that you have books for, okay? There's no sense of doubling down on it, especially depending on if you've got a space issue. But this book here is a home guide to, the ultimate guide to home butchering. I got this online on Amazon. That's probably backwards, but I'll show it to you. And this book has pictures very nice, colorful illustrations on every animal, the tools to make it happen, the cleaning, the dispatching, and the preservation of just about any animal that we are going to ever butcher, which we already know how to do it. <clears throat> but I have this book in case there's a question that comes up and we don't know what it is, or say, we happen to no longer be here for whatever reason and my kids need to know how. So they have all of this library of knowledge and these are things that we live on and that they know. So they've had mushrooms because mom's cooked them. They've had pickled eggs and rhubarb jelly because mom's, you know, so how did she do that? They know that they like it. How do they get it and make it and find it? Forage it? It's because it's in here. All they got to do is look. I can tell them and teach them now when I'm here. But, you know, when you're stressed and you're in a situation... Some of that is going to be put on the wayside. Your brain's just not going to, you know, that's like an emergency. When there's, there's been a, a really bad accident or something, or you know, it's a dire emergency, and you can't come up with your, you don't even know your own phone number, you know? So if you're stressed, sometimes your mind don't think right. And if you're stressed for long, long periods of time, um, I just really worry about not being able to get to the stuff that I need, or my kids or my husband not being able to get to it, so... I have binders of things. I suggest that you have binders of things. And one more, don't just have it on, okay, I would, I would suggest you have, I have one on canning, I have one on mushrooms, I've got one on herbs, I've got one on gardening, medicine. You need to have one on your medical 
records, you need to have one on your bank records, you need to have one on um, your bills. So like with the bills, with the one that I have that has the bills in it, okay? You obviously have your bill. You're, you're going to do your taxes every year. So hole punch them, stick them in here, you know, have a, have a um, tab, little tab things. Say mortgage, credit card, car something, insurance, whatever. Have it all in here and every time you pay it, hole punch it, slide it in there. At the end of the year, when it's tax time, all you have to do, pull out this binder, pop out the papers for that year, and then wherever your receipts are gathered. If you have a place to put your receipts, and then you're ready for your taxes. You've collected everything all year long, kept it nice and neat. So this is kind of like footwork at the beginning, so it makes it easier in the end for you, right? But always, always keep note of things. So in my, in my bill binder and my medical binder have a little notebook right here okay and every time you talk to somebody i don't care how minor you think it is you always journal it put a date um you know say say today i t date i don't even know what today's date it's probably the 28th 228 228 something something you know 228 22 um the time put the time Sometimes, and the reason why the time, if you talk to some of the bigger companies and they record it, and it was, this is recording for quality purposes, well, if you talk to Joey on 2.22 or 2.28.22 at 5 o'clock in the evening or 3 o'clock in the evening, they can go back and find that, especially depending on the severity of the situation. I've actually had that happen maybe twice, I think. I know once, maybe twice, but I've had to go back and look it up. I gave them the name and the date and the time. So, but anyway, date, date it, no matter how big or small. And the reason why you should keep your medical records, one is for right now, we literally, as of the last two weeks, our hospital, and I'm getting conflicting stories on this, so I'm just going to put this out here. Um, we, I have heard one thing that our hospital was bought out by a bigger entity and their computers are not driving. <clears throat> so their system is down. They have no electronics whatsoever. I don't know how they're even functioning, but I do know they're passing people off to other area hospitals because they can't do anything with them right now. Not to mention the fact that, um, well, and then there was another person who said, well, someone hacked into their system. Um, they had a soft spot and it was hacked into, and um, they were told that if they wanted their information unlocked, they had to give them a ransom. I don't know. I don't know about that, but it is what it is. All I'm saying is, there was a friend of ours that told us there was a man in the hospital who was getting ready to have heart surgery, okay? He had went through all, and for those of you who have been through, you know, all the testing and all the appointments and, and what leads to that appointment, okay? They have no record of it. And this man has to start over because they don't have any record. So what I suggest, and on the medical side of it, I'm not exactly sure how I would handle that. You know, I'm in the VA and you get basically documentation on everything anyways. But with that situation, especially with it being such a big surgery, you could probably call and say, hey, I need my medical records and they'll send it to you and then you can just put it in a binder. If you're in that field, maybe um, comment on that and let me know what you think or feel. Uh, maybe you even know a little something, some little trick that we don't know. Now they have um, computerized systems where you can get on there and you can print your records out. But like in this scenario, he didn't realize he had lost everything until it was already gone. So, But if he would have kept up on it, he probably would have had it. So maybe your medical records and do the same thing. Have a little notebook with a journal on who you talk to. And I know it seems so OCD and so tedious, but... I am telling you, this has saved my butt so many times. And more on the um, more on the bill paying side than anywhere. Probably number one would be bill paying. Probably number two would be with the medical. You know, because I'm a veteran, and I, if you're a veteran or you know someone, or say you're taking care of your parents or someone that's a veteran, it is almost a you know it's a like a requirement that you should be keeping a binder. Because, and you know how much paperwork they send you. I mean, you could start the biggest bonfire in the world with the paperwork that they send you on a yearly basis, right? 
So keep that. Keep a binder. I think I have a binder on my dad's. It's like the giant three ring things. And we just, you know, end date it. So if this is year um, 2022, you know, you want one 2020, 2021. And then when it gets one so thick and you've had, I don't know, say two years ago or a year ago, you're probably not going to use that. So I would like clamp it, put it in some kind of manila envelope and store it somewhere in a file. But, um, this is a little outdated of a version. However, right now, I bet that man probably wishes he had his doc, his stuff documented so he could go back and he could probably take that somewhere else and maybe get care somewhere else, you know. So there's been times when I've paid a bill and they swear I've not paid it, you know. And if you ever talk to anyone on the phone, if you ever pay a bill, if there ever is a situation where you need a confirmation number, I don't care if you, it's a receipt, if you pay for something online say you want a receipt, yes, I want a receipt. Either you get it online and print it yourself or have them send it to you in the mail. If you're talking to them and you paid a bill or done anything and you get a confirmation number, put C, pound, so you know confirmation number, put the confirmation number. So you have the date, the time, and the person's name and a confirmation number. And even they'll write you a little, a little um, uh, description box of what you talked about you know even if you just write off you don't have to do it right then because you're listening you know as soon as you hang up the phone get on there and write that down okay very important that has saved my rear end so many times uh, having that there but just something I just figured you guys wasn't thinking about this video went a little longer than I expect it looks like it's about 20 22 minutes long but so yeah keep these and this will probably save you later on you can always pull it back and um, I know there's been places too where say you don't get very good wireless reception and you can just pull out your book and look it up, right? So that's it for today's video and I will see you next time.